Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the official podcast. I don't know what episode number we're on. It doesn't matter. Let's hurry up and finish this episode so we can go back to playing Elden Ring. <laughs> it's 274, damn it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and as we all know, respect. as we all know, Elden Ring is the most important thing happening in the world right now. And it's all we care about. That's it. Usually when Andrew says that, he's being sarcastic, but this guy has not been able to shut the fuck up about how good Elden Ring is, so he's actually being genuine when he says that uh, this to time. To be fair. I thought that would be you. To be fair, you've done the same thing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this <laughs> Elden Ring is an absolute fucking masterpiece. It is. I love it. It's so goddamn perfect. I'm going to get Ugh. my opinion out of the way first. I don't think a game that has technical issues can be called the masterpiece. That's now my let's... take on it. Let's address the elephant in the room. I found through a little bit of Googling that you can get rid of 99% of the technical issues through just tweaking graphic settings. I tweaked some graphic settings yesterday and I have had literally zero frame issues or anything the entire time all of yesterday that I played. Um, what, what's kind of blowing me away though is that people are dismissing the entire game over petty shit. For example, people are giving it negative reviews because it doesn't have ultra widescreen. Like, okay. Well, that's that's it's PC when games a game, in general. Yeah, when a game is extremely popular, they're gonna look for pretty much anything to mm -hmm. shit on it for. It happens with every single game ever. But if it's a company they like, like Witcher Three, which is by no means a masterpiece in my eyes, they will dismiss all of the glaringly obvious flaws. Mm -hmm. It's just shocking it's just to me. Things. It's it's sitting at a seventy percent, I think, on Steam, which it's kind of insane. I don't know. Really? So would you say it's petty shit to dismiss it when it doesn't even launch for a lot of people, apparently? I haven't seen fair? anyone say that. I oh, also I have. haven't I seen even, I've that. even seen um, people saying that you should just shut the fuck up if your game doesn't launch. <laughs> really? <laughs> I saw Jackson those screenshots. It's in the... Yeah. Wow. Let me copy this. It's in the Steam discussions or whatever it's called, that thing, you know? Oh, the farms? Yeah, the Steam board. Yeah, the Steam board here, I'll put it in the chat. So what it says is... People acting too childish about game not running. No one cares if you refund it. No need to make a post about it. Just refund and buy some hentai game or some shit. <laughs> so here's the That's thing. pretty reasonable. Here's the thing with game reviews as a whole, though. They're kind of an outdated system because games change now. You can patch them and radically different. If you play a game that came out a year ago... Compared to when it launched, it's going to have far more content and bug fixes and patches and this and that. So if we wait, say, a month and say all the Elden Ring cut patches come out and it does run perfectly smooth on every system, is it then like, you know, do we remove all the negative criticism? No, most people are going to not even remember they reviewed it negatively. That's incorrect. Sure, Look at No Man's Sky that had a massive them. rebound. Now it's like overwhelmingly positive in terms of reviews on steam after they but fixed is that game. overall or is that all time yeah but on steam or, or and places like that, you all can time. still order Jesus. you can still order the know, reviews by like recent yeah. you know you can give mm -hmm. them priority i don't know how steam's algorithm works but i would assume that it gives more weight to more recent yeah. reviews yeah so here's, here's way, what i'm I mean, talking about we're not there yet here's what i'm it's, talking we about are at launch and uh, at launch, there's like 40% negative comments saying, hey, I can't even launch this or it doesn't even run right. Yeah, here's what I'm talking about. I'm on the No Man's Sky page. And if you're looking at recent reviews for the last month, it's at an 88%. But if you're looking at all time, it's only at a 72. But what and does the all time reviews matter there, though? If you can see the recent reviews are trending upwards towards because, 88%, that's what I would focus on. Because when it launches is when the sales figures are the most crucial. And that's when also well, yeah, well, most then, people are paying that's attention. That's when developers to it. should be focusing on launching a game that runs well. Then I guess. I mean, you can mm. only really review the game on what's launched when you're reviewing it initially. You can't review it on hopes and dreams in the future. Look at Cyberpunk. But that's that's where I think the argument of today's gaming landscape comes in. Can you review games based on the future? Because we know this game is going to get patched. We know that the performance issues are in some Do way going know, to be... Does From have a good uh, track record with patching stuff? Doesn't Bloodborne still run at, like, really bad frame rate on PlayStation? 
Blood... It's a PlayStation 4. It's locked at 30. Yeah, PlayStation... No, but it, 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 I've, I'm pretty sure that it wasn't able to meet 30 frames per second. And that's, like, that's because it was on all. the PlayStation 4. They explicitly said Bloodborne, like, could not run any better because of the PS4. So, I mean, it, it, I think it's a more nuanced question now. You know, if we were back in the day and it's like, Super Mario 64 is out, review the game. It's like, yeah, here's the game, here's what I thought. But now, we know Elden Ring is going to run fine at some point, or at least serviceable. Because they even tweeted the well, day of, okay, they were but like... Do you, do you see how this comes across to normies who are not like FromSoft's uh, mm -hmm. fans? It, like... I promise in the future one day it'll be run on your computer. You know? No, I, I understand. It's it's not a good look. Yeah. But right. it, okay. it's That's just all I think Jackson and I are saying, I think. I guess my point is that it seems like day one reviews of games are kind of pointless now. Because you're gonna have a flood of people review bombing every single big release because they can't get it to run or there's something political around it they don't agree with or they don't like the series. It it feels like you know, reviewing the game yeah, now the is goes pointless. Both ways. It's not as if people only leave negative reviews because they're biased. They do the same thing with positive reviews. There's a bunch True. of people leaving this thing mm -hmm. a ten out of ten, I'm sure, because even if they completely can see all the technical flaws, they're just invested in it now and they don't want it to flop. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything about people not being able to launch the game, but I decided to Google it because I'm pretty sure this issue happens with every PC release ever made. And it's because people with literal actual dog shit computers, like genuine calculators, try and play the game and it just doesn't meet the requirements. So I looked up like the most popular PC games ever by rating. The Witcher 3 is, of course, up there. And there is Thank a God. ton of reports of people not able to launch that game. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall that game ever having like big press around yeah. it being oh, broken no, it, on launch. It, which it did have some performance issues, but I'm pretty sure it was mostly on console. But regardless, um, it, like the PC ecosystem is just so vast. And there's so many different like permutations of, of you know, configurations of PCs that you're always going to run into isolated cases like that. So I don't think yeah, that's abnormal right. with Elden Ring. Like not being able to launch the game, I think you have to take that with well, a grain of salt. What, what, but what I have seen though is just inconsistent frame rates in yeah, the, the game from the a variety problem. of yeah, from a but, variety but here's of streamers the thing. and such. Here's the thing, though, Jackson. There's also a lot of review bombing over very small, insignificant issues. Like a lot of negative reviews I saw just said, "Bring Bloodborne to PC." Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like I saw. I didn't see that. Yeah, we're reaching a point where people aren't reviewing the game; they're just finding reasons to hate it and pushing that as if it's a legitimate critique of it. Yeah, I, I, I don't like yeah. that either, but I would also say that the people giving it 100 out of 100 also aren't reviewing the game earnestly because they're not mentioning the frame rate issues yeah. that I would be buying into if I bought the game based off their review. And yeah, it can be fixed eventually, but... But, know, here's, but here's where... Here's where the debate comes in then. Say it's a person to push an issue. If I publish my review and I say, yeah, there are frame rate issues for some people. I never had them. I give this game a 10 out of 10. No, Is my review fine. invalid? You know? No, no, I yeah. completely get that. But with how widespread the frame rate issues are uh, currently from what I've seen, um, I, I just don't believe that there could be so many 100 out of 100 reviews from people. I guess unless they're playing the console versions, well, which are also apparently aren't performing very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, isn't FromSoft known for their awful PC ports? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, they actually... Ch no, 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 no. They changed that. Uh, I don't remember where <laughs> or when, but they started to do much better jobs with their PC ports. I think it was Dark Souls 3 Ring City was actually optimal to play on PC. But they took a step backwards this time, so the frame rate is absolutely the worst part of Elden Ring. But they released a patch like eight hours ago that addresses it and made it a lot better for a lot of people. Has it? Yep. Uh, what was patch. interesting is I saw a lot of PC reviewers initially say that the frame rate stuttering uh, wasn't too bad in the pre like the pre launch code, but then the day one code made it even worse somehow. And that's when I heard reviewers that started walking back funny. their initial 100 out of 100s or 10 out of 10s. Like one, one reviewer I follow changed from a must buy rating to like a wait for sale rating based on the day one code. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that too. Somebody was like trying to cheese a Steam library and all the records in it so he could play the version before the patch or try and play it without <laughs> having to patch it. It was weird. I have to say there's already like a bunch of funny compilations of the game like glitching out and crashing on people and I laughed a lot. I, I sent Jackson one 
and at some point in the video the guys I, I think it was like some japanese streamer or something and he he was enjoying the game and the game just goes dark to a black screen and i saw my reflection in the screen just cackling which made me laugh all the harder <laughs> and that's where this question comes up again because if you play the game in a bubble does this issue matter let's say i buy elden ring and i say oh i don't want to read anything or see anything i don't want to be spoiled i don't want to know what happens i don't want to know anything so i play the game and i have zero performance issues does it matter that other people have issues then like, should that no. in any way reflect how I feel why, about the why game? Would, why would reviews even matter to you if you've already bought the game? You were already in from the get-go. That's invested. also true, yeah. I, true. I only care because it definitely reflects sales and reception, and the fucking industry cares about these things. They care a lot about Steam reviews and Metacritic and all that shit. So. Well, review bombing is always going to be an issue as long as there's, you know... Uh, audience participation in that process like there's no way to mm -hmm. really curtail that so i don't really think there's any do they though i feel like that's only prevention. western developers that care a lot i feel like the asian ones are just like <laughs> oh you oh you negatively reviewed it well fuck you here's pokemon scarlet and violet it's just his ass <laughs> <Buy it. laughs> have you guys seen the new trailer i'm pretty sure kyra and andrew I have did. i skimmed yeah, through it topics. i watched it Dude, what, what, what new trailer for what you didn't see it charlie it, it, it Went up two hours yeah. ago. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. You can you you can do no. like a live viewing of it right now. I'm done doing it. Is it a, a back yeah. to the original roots of dog shit? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, it's, no. it's, it's, there's no escaping the well, dog shit of Pokemon games. It, but they're first going of all, for the of it gameplay. Is a security guard at the Game Freak Studio running through the corridors with a flashlight? It's in our. Uh, private topics channel which may uh, like yeah, I watched yeah that, that first minute and a half is where all game freaks effort went into this clearly because <laughs> it was like well shot well lit that's that it that's where all their budget went i'm watching and it the now. graphics look awful i don't know yeah they do they they look like the mario kart graphics from the nintendo ds that i remember it looks like a game from 2007 Oh, you know what it actually looks like? It looks like that Sonic game. What was that Sonic game where he was in a city? Like a European city? Oh, Sonic, Sonic 06. 06. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, well it was, was it 06. Yeah. yeah, it where does was, look like, like human that. characters that looked woefully out of place with the yeah. art style. Yeah, Elise. That's where yeah. he falls in love with that human named Elise. And it just looks really awkward and weird because she's like three times his size. And human. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I remember. I watched a playthrough of that entire game. I I was so fucking drawn in by how weird and out of place everything was and how shitty it was. I had to see it for myself. So while Charlie's well, watching that, yeah. I was going to say this is painfully generic Pokemon formula, it seems. Read the comments if you want to have an aneurysm. It's all people going, this looks really great! The top comment is, I can see Pokemon and Game Freak are finally moving in the right direction, <laughs> despite the trailer being major majority taken up by a yep. security guard in the real world, and them just showing random environments. There's also, like, no real gameplay in the trailer. I, I don't know how to hammer There's this- There's nothing at all here. I don't know how to hammer this... this into people's brains because it's the dumbest fucking caveman thing I see time and time again. You cannot judge a game by its trailer. Ever. Never, ever, ever. You can never judge the quality of a game based on the trailer. They are not indicative to real Wrong. gameplay, and I they can are not I can absolutely, to performance. <laughs> I can absolutely judge this off the quality. This is going to be shit, Andrew. Okay. Okay. One, one comment says, someone, someone hold me. This is too epic. Uh, <laughs> God. Yeah, I just saw that. That's a lucky, that's a a lucky boy right there. trailer is architectured to sell you the product. It is not ever <laughs> indicative of true design. <laughs> Surely that architecture well, the a little design, bit better I mean, than... the graphics, even from the trailer, look like dog shit. It's yeah. so alias. Yeah. It's so low it's resolution. I don't blame... I, I it's not the Switch. No, no. It's, it's there not the Switch. There are such beautiful... games on the no, Switch. No, it's bad developers. They're just bad developers. Well, there are so many beautiful developers. games. 
on the Switch. It's a weak console. It's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> it is absolutely a weak console, but it's how you use yeah, the console's they hardware can that still, makes they the could game. Still, yeah, they could still get good lighting. Look at Mario Kart 8 and Mario Odyssey, well, no, those games. Yeah. Breath of the Wild Odyssey, is still Breath of the Wild. Yeah. You can yeah. say that Breath of the Wild is like kind of empty and whatnot, but it still looks nice. It's passable, you know? Absolutely. It's, like, it's, it's, the, point it's where the design it's sensibilities. Mind, but... it's, it's how they build the worlds out as well that make it look so bland and disgusting. I mean, I know everybody likes dunking on the Switch for being weak, but it's not like it's a fucking iPhone 4 from like 20 years ago. Yeah, it's, can't you even play be able to make games. it look better. <laughs> 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 what, 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 what if it could play Elden Ring, though? Would you ever see your family again? Bro, I wouldn't be surprised if they try and port it to the Switch. They tried that with Apex, and the goddamn thing couldn't run past 10 FPS, and oh, it still can't. Dude, Dark it, Souls. It still can't. Dark Souls is on the Switch. Did you know that? I did, yeah, true. Yeah, I How does played that run it. On the Switch? It's it terrible. Yeah. It's fucking terrible. I played the first, like, three hours of it, and it lags in literally every single area. It's not Dying great. Light, Dying Light yeah, 2 is coming out on Switch as well. what if they in future? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. All I'm saying is if the Steam Deck can run Elden Ring, I, I will never see any living human being again. I will be locked in a single room with water and a oh, toilet. Oh, yeah, isn't that um, shipping soon? Are you getting yours? Yeah. I've got mine pre-ordered, yeah. it is. They are starting to ship. They started two days ago, I think. Did the reviews go out okay. already? Uh, I haven't seen any of those, but I know people are starting to get it because they're posting photos with it and shit. Did so, you, are you the only one who got one here? Jackson, Charlie, did you guys order any? I did not get no, one. I'm just not a handheld gamer kind me of either. guy. Yeah, Never, me neither. I really have been. I just like the portability. I, I appreciate hanging out with friends and being able to bring it. Hanging out oh, with friends mm -hmm. and ignoring them while you play Elder <laughs> yep. for eight hours. Fuck yeah. That's <laughs> true or friendship. Hang out with the friends. <laughs> yeah. just play. Well, if I'm staying over a friend's house and we're just kind of bored, I'll just whip it out, start playing stuff. It's not a common. <laughs> yeah. It's not a common. That's fair, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess if I was at a friend's house, to I'd be fair, spend to more be time fair, with them. I do it with the Switch a lot, but it's mostly because we play like Mario Party or some shit. So the yeah, Steam Deck. I mean, there's going to be multiplayer shit on mm. the Steam Deck. So yeah, I just that makes sense. yeah, I I don't go out enough to warrant like a handheld game and i i, I couldn't imagine yeah. ever like going mm. on a bus or a train or a plane and like playing it i tried that with the switch and it was an awful experience i hated really being on the I, yeah a, i hated being on the it, plane playing it it's a nuisance right because that's how i used to feel with like the fuck what came after the nuisance? game boy advance the ds was it the ds yeah, yeah. the ds or, yeah. oh no no i didn't not that it wasn't the ds for me psp i tried to like get into Ooh. handheld gaming <laughs> with psp and shit and not only were the games not fun obviously but it was just such a fucking nuisance to carry it around in like the little pack and have it like take up space places when you really don't even get like a good experience out of it at that point just go to sleep or something yeah uh, like you're in the plane and there's like people yeah. talking around you like you're still like not, yeah, but not you comfortable in your headphones yeah i wear headphones yeah no, i want everyone else to hear I love, playing playing my, I love playing my fucking Switch on the plane. I do it every single time I fly. I just get comfy, wear some headphones, and I can zone out for like three, four hours, however long the flight is. Yeah, I try that I'm just too. not comfortable I, I enough to enjoy it. With... Well, I'm not comfortable anyway on the plane, Jackson. I'm just trying to <laughs> take my mind off the fact that I'm going to crash and die with like some dumb game on the Switch, you know, for a few minutes. I want my last moments to be Bing Bing Wahoo, all right? <laughs> is that from Elden Ring? <laughs> what was that for? Yeah. You yeah, you collect the Elden Ring and he jumps up and puts out a peace sign and you hear ba da ba da ba da ba. It's great. <laughs> I just, honestly, my only hope is like once they're fishing the wreckage from the ocean and they discover my bloated, water soaked body, that they still <laughs> see that I was wearing me on these when I died. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well. Let me tell you something about me undies, okay? There's a lot of good purchases. <laughs> There's, a There's a lot of good purchases that you can make in these trying times. Elden Ring is one of them. I don't care about performance issues, but if you want something that'll never have performance issues, well, it's going to be me undies because they believe comfort is more than just what's touching your skin. They believe in feeling comfortable in your own skin, and that means finding the perfect fit and size for you. Me Undies wears 
from 4XL to extra small for everything they make. Mm. They've got different cuts for different butts in bold covers, colors and fun, adventurous prints. MeUndies wants you to find comfort in the size that you find so you can be happier and comfier every single place on your booty. All four official boys wear MeUndies. I don't know how to put this in your head any more comfortably, many more softer. Same thing that MeUndies is. But all four of us wear them. My girlfriend wears it. So if you're a woman out there or you have a woman-style butt, you can look at it and say, you need some MeUndies, mister. Because they're going to have that style as well. MeUndies promises if you're not comfortable with any product for any reason, you can return your order for a full refund within 45 days and... Any first-time purchasers are going to get 15% off and free shipping right to your door. To get 15% off of your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash official. That's MeUndies.com slash official. But what are you going to put in those MeUndies? Are you going to put a gross forest of junk. wilderness with all sorts <laughs> of like creatures and fungi and living beings frolicking around. Maybe a magic unicorn that if you rustle through the trees, you can see its wonderful majestic stride. No, you're going to chop down those fucking trees. You're going to clean yourself up down there and you're going to use Manscaped to do it. Manscaped is going to have you have clean and shiny balls all year round. It's the new year. And people are starting to take in personal grooming seriously. It's 2022. You got to do something. Finally. Something about that bush. You don't have to go all out, but do something about it. And that's why I'm going to recommend to you the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped. You're going to find their signature lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. It's designed to trim hair on loose skin. And also, it's going to have advanced skin-safe technology to reduce cuts and nicks on your nuts. It comes equipped with a 4000K LED spotlight, and it'll help you groom when using their Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver, which are formulations to help you, well, clean yourself up, you fucking disgusting mess. You're going to kick discomfort and poor hygiene to the curb this year and use the best tools for the job with Manscaped. You're going to travel to manscaped.com to get 20% off and free shipping with code OFFICIAL. Get 20% off and free shipping with code OFFICIAL at manscaped.com. New year, no pubes. 2022 with Manscaped. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Code OFFICIAL. And Thank finally, you. this podcast may as well be sponsored by Elden Ring because we won't shut the fuck up about it. That's about it. Yeah. Thanks, Elden Ring. Thank you, Elden Ring, <laughs> for ruining my life for the last three days. Thank you, George R. R. Martin. By the way, may I ask again, this isn't like me trying to dump on your game and I hope you enjoyed, but what exactly did George R. R. Martin contribute? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I have absolutely Didn't he write the whole story? No idea. So I bought the game, by the way. I'm I'm genuinely not like biased against it. I wanna try to play it and enjoy it, but from what I've seen from the gameplay, it's just dragons and zombies and horses. Is did he just like mm. fax them a page that said dragons? What did he do? To earn his paycheck. I couldn't tell you. I, so I will say, so far, Elden Ring has been the most story-heavy of the Souls games. Like, it actually feeds you a lot of lore, which mm -hmm. is great, because Dark Souls has always had, like, a cool lore. It's just you have to go so far out of your way to find it. You end up just watching YouTubers who put the effort in. Elden Ring gives you a lot of story, but it's nothing outside of the usual Dark Souls from what I've seen. So I don't What know is the all. usual Dark Souls? I'm curious. I've never, like, so, like learned in, about Dark Souls for, lore. For example, in Dark Souls 1... Uh, there's the 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 lords right so they all find these great souls and then gwyn's like the lord of all of them and you play as the pygmy a descendant of the pygmy which was a, a creature that found the dark soul and you play as basically like this undead guy and you go throughout the game you have to reach the end you know and then you have a choice do you continue the cycle of fire do you break it whatever after you kill gwyn and there's so many similarities between, like, the Dark Souls lore formula and Elden Ring, for example, like, being tarnished, you know, having to go through, like, the Great Lords in order to do the, the cycle or break the cycle, whatever. And then throughout the game, you get, like, little side quests and shit. 
It's just well, yeah. Th so that's what. That's so what... to to be fair to Elden Ring, uh, like every Souls game follows this formula. Bloodborne was you are a hunter, and do you continue the cycle of staying yeah. in a dream or waking up? Yeah. And in Sekiro, you're a disgraced ninja, this... and it's like, you know, you have to fight your way through all this stuff. And do you continue the cycle of mortality, immortality, or not? Like it's it's, it's kind a of cool their story. It's a cool. It's cool themes and stuff. But how is that to be fair to Elden Ring when we give Pokemon the same shit for repeating the same story for twenty years? Because the gameplay is very different. Yeah, they but the story is. We're, we're talking about the story here. Well, I don't know how you threw Pokemon in. Pokemon's story isn't yeah. my main complaint about Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it should be. Also, it should be. It's the same story every single time. I'm also, relating the two things. Also, it Jackson, is, I'm, I'm, it is okay, also, Jackson if I'm you set down those. Dark Souls and you look at Bloodborne next to it, they look extremely different. They're entirely different lore and, like, fucking world design and character design yeah, and but feels still got the and same. modes. You, you, you yourself just said that it's got the same founda foundation to the story. You're, you're a... You know, a cast out soul or whatever it's called. And then so there's Fast like and the Furious is exactly the same movie as John Wick because dudes shoot guns. No, I'm saying I'm talking about what you yourself said with the foundation of the the law of these games. Yeah, the you said story they're fundamentally beats are the same, the same but the, the framework is the same, but the way they're presented is entirely different. Star Wars and Lord of the Rings have extremely similar movie uh, story beats, but they're entirely different. The way they tell them, the way well, their characters be able interact. To tell, would you be able to tell that George R.R. R. Martin was involved if it hadn't been promoted? No. <laughs> okay, so I still don't know what, what he did. did he do to earn his paycheck? <laughs> just, that's all my, I'm asking. I have no idea. He still, he, from I, what I've I seen, know what nothing. he did. He did I know what he did. Building, right? Yeah, he gave things names. Because he does that typical thing. <laughs> George R. Like R. Martin what? does this thing. Jackson, you can confirm this because you read the books. Where things have to have, like, lengthy, important titles. So, for example, there's ghosts in Elden Ring. And, like, zombies. And they're officially known as those who live in death. And I knew immediately George R. R. Martin came up with that title. <laughs> it just sounds it seems like, like a, a Japanese Game of Thrones thing. thing. More than a George R. R. Martin thing. That but is absolutely yeah, a fucking really? George R. R. Martin thing, to be fair. It's just from watching yeah. Game of Thrones, that is some fucking George uh, DNA. Yeah. That sounds like something so you would definitely a, hear in Game of Thrones. So he just has a different yeah. name for the word zombie? <laughs> yeah. Those who live beyond the grave. They're called oh, those thanks, who George. live in death. <laughs> Here's hundred million dollars, George. Thank you. Brilliant stuff as always. <laughs> it really seems like he just came up with all the names for everything. The story is definitely similar to all the Souls games, but George R. R. Martin was like, "No, that's not. That's not a fucking ghoul. That's a. That's an imp dragger. <laughs> and that's. That, that, that's not an orc. That, that's a. That's a bone cruncher. <laughs> he seems like that's yeah, what he did. <laughs> I think you're right. I think what he, like, he basically sent them a napkin of all the world building and stuff. Like, basically said, you know, this is what this castle is called. This is what the religion is called. And then they, like, they used the uh, Dark Souls formula or whatever to, yeah. like, structure the story around that. Yeah. In between just sipping out of, like, a coconut shell, he sent some <laughs> fucking just doodles on a napkin. It's not <laughs> a dragon, you guys. It's a sky lizard. <laughs> I looked it up. Apparently, all he did is he provided Miyazaki and his team with samples of text depicting different parts of Elden Ring's lore. So he named everything. In quotes. Yeah. In, in quotes, so some, sort of, back, some okay. sort of back, some sort of backbone to the world. Yeah, he named yeah, everything. Lovely. He said, "Here's yeah. what's in Elden Ring. Here's what you put in it." <laughs> and then they crafted the narrative around that. So yeah. you said the narrative is far more straightforward in well, not straightforward. No, sure. they, they give you more. Like mm -hmm. right. what, so you, you actually, actually experience it instead of like reading notes found in the world or whatever. Yeah. But okay. you can you, there are still like those lore, the bits and pieces of lore scattered throughout the world that you can stumble upon and shit. To but, deepen it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. doing a much I'd say better because I like it more much better job of actually giving you a narrative to follow and giving you characters to care about as opposed to just everything being a giant mystery unless you really go out of your way to get the, the details. Sekiro yeah. kind of had uh, made strides in that in that way, didn't it? Because you had that, like, the young Sekiro prince did. character. Yeah. Sekiro yeah. is also the most straightforward of all the games, for sure. Yeah, I'd say Sekiro did a really good job of, like, delivering you a story without you having to go too far out of your way to get the, mm -hmm. the majority of it. Who's Something... A... Who's a 
director or writer you guys would have hired instead of George RR? Kojima. Ko- 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 I was just about to say Kojima. <laughs> just yeah. really fucking goofy. I want to be playing Elden really? Ring and the boss comes up and his life bar says Sword Big Man. That's all. That's all I want. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Die Hardman V3. <laughs> He would have made the game so miserable for you guys, though. It would, it would have I slowed know. everything down. Oh, it would have been fucking insufferable, but I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to appreciate, like, a giant dragon that turns into a Gundam or something stupid with a baby in its ass. Fuck yeah. Mm. I still feel I like... I go uh, with the... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I still feel like Elden Ring or Souls games still embody that kind of, same kind of spirit, like that kind of Japanese wackiness, like the monster they do. designs and the world oh, design absolutely. and stuff. I mean, so I Dark, Souls, Dark Souls is an unabashed, full-on, like, Berserk fan fiction. It's been pretty much admitted that he was like, yeah, I just love Berserk. Here, look, here's this tribute to Berserk. Here's that. But they do still keep that wackiness. Like, there's a character in this game, I, I don't know if you've met him yet, Alexander the Pot. Mm-hmm. I did, yeah, you spank his ass real hard. Yeah, so you spank him to get him out of the ground, and then he pops up, and he's just this giant talking pot, and he's really yeah. fucking cool. And he's literally the like, one that they came call out me the, the Iron the game Fist. Awards? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think so, actually. Yeah. There was a little pot on wheels that came out and spoke yeah. to Jeff Keighley. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Well, Alexander's a big version of that. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. He was actually in the game. I remember thinking when that thing happened with Jeff Keighley, I was like, oh, look at this. Some nepotism going on. This guy pulled a favor with Jeff and now he's on the stage, but he's actually in the game. That's pretty cool. Yep. Something else I really appreciate in terms of spelling it out is they actually explain mechanics a lot better this time. Like if you, uh, if you want to wield... I figured you guys would hate that. Well, no, there's small, like, things that are just much less annoying. In old Souls games, if you didn't have the stats for a weapon, you could potentially wield it if you had if you used it two-handedly, but only with both hands. In the new game, it'll tell you, hey, you can only use this two-handedly, or hey, you can't use this at all. It's just convenient, because I don't have to, like, run the numbers and check if I can use a weapon in certain conditions. The game will tell you. It's, but I it's feel just like nice. It, They've added a lot of that I feel like Dark stuff. Souls fans in the past have always said that like one of the strong points of the game is that sense of discovery where you learn things on your own through like trial and error and you and you figure things out and you figure out the perfect optimal play style and it, it's just more broad in that sense of discovery. But I guess that this game has that open world aspect which I like, think that applies explodes the sense of discovery. I absolutely agree that applies in terms of game design, but I don't think in terms of game mechanics that should apply. I I think the player should know what they're capable of at all times, like what you can do. Like, fucking power stancing was a big part of Dark Souls 2, and I don't think they even ever told you how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of dumb to me. No, no, I'm pretty sure they did. I I played Dark Souls 2, like, last year, and I think I remember one of the uh, tutorial messages was how to power stance but i could be wrong mm. did they tell I, you I how completely the, what agree stat with you, requirements you needed for it though no i don't think so yeah see that, that's what i'm talking about you know like i completely agree with you though like one of my biggest hindrances and i think a lot of people's hindrances with the game is that like nothing the, the mechanics aren't explained to you so you don't necessarily know how to actually interact <laughs> with the game and that's just frustrating mm-hmm. I think the challenge should definitely come from a like knowing how to engage with the game, but then it actually being difficult to do that. Like this challenge there. What I found really funny about Elden Ring is there is a tutorial. There's an explicit tutorial section, but you can skip it without even knowing. Yeah. You can walk yeah. right well, by it without even realizing yeah. it's there. <laughs> so so when you start the game, uh, I, I not even spoilers because it's literally the very first area of the game. But if you care about Elden Ring that much, d- just I don't know, skip the next minute. When you very first start the game, you'll be walking around in a cave, and there's a big door right in front of you. And if you open that door, the game starts just straight up. But there's a hole to your right, and there's a little ghost like pointing at it. But you can miss it very easily. But if you fall down that hole, it starts the tutorial where it's like, oh, press this button to dodge and press this button to attack. <laughs> I like why they did that because on repeat playthroughs, it means you can just run straight ahead and completely skip the tutorial. But yeah. for new players, it is really easy yeah, to just suck. miss the tutorial entirely. <laughs> 
Yeah, especially after being told by everyone, every <laughs> reviewer and every player that like this game's the most accessible Dark Souls, like you should be able yeah. to play it if you're yeah. new. And then immediately you miss the tutorial and get like us <laughs> fucked into oblivion by the first uh, boss. Because isn't there like a big boss right outside of that tutorial? Yeah, section? you're not supposed mm-hmm. you're not supposed to kill it like on your first playthrough, like as level one. You're supposed to run by it. I, of course, being the gamer barbarian turbo specimen that I am, killed it at level one, 21 tries. Andrew skipped <laughs> it because he's a little baby boy. But yeah, there isn't immediately a huge tough enemy right outside. Hey, I yeah. skipped it because I was like, I'll come back later. And then I forgot about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I got to go kill that night. It does thing sound like a bitch thing. boy. Yeah, it you, was. So you went and it statted up, basically. You leveled up and got better I'll at the admit game. I did. Charlie. Yeah, okay. Yep, I use blood, sweat, tears, and perseverance. Twenty-one tries, and I fucking blast. So how long? Yeah, I'm how assuming long did it take you, you did the tutorial. <laughs> I did do the tutorial. Yeah, I, I'm no, pretty no. much hundred percenting the game. So how long did it take you to kill that guy in like real world time doing it thirty something tries? It I actually, have the footage. It was twenty-one tries. I. Mm. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was just over thirty-five minutes. Mm. I didn't want to say it wasn't my, that long ago. My initial thought was I, I fought him twice and then I said, fuck this and I want to spend an hour on this and I just moved on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure I really just wanted, I wanted to see the game. I was, was excited. Was... I didn't want to just sit on the first boss. I've still got the footage. Was... I'll check. I'll check. I'll fact check. I didn't think it was quite an hour because that boss was pretty quick. It was like immediately like right outside. He didn't have a ton of health. Mm-hmm. It just, you might be right, though. So, Maybe it was closer I to did, an hour. I didn't get What's... Asylum Demon vibes where it's like you're supposed to fight it and it's actually not that hard at all. But with him, it was kind of like, eh, I'd rather just play the game, come back to it, not <laughs> force myself to beat it. Well, that's what I think the coolest aspect of Elden Ring is, is, you know, that open world thing. I yeah. don't like open world games. I don't love open world games at all. But I mm-hmm. like it in this sense where you can really set your own challenges. Yeah. And, like, you can Elden... just, you don't have to be lying the story. So you don't have to How overcome those like big them? obstacles. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Why I don't like open world games? Because they suffer from the yeah. same Ubisoft formula that's been plaguing the industry for 10 years. Yeah, that's I fucking hate open, open world, world games. games Elden, Elden Ring is a fucking master of you can come back later. Like, if you're ever stuck on a hard boss or can't really get past something, you have 10 other different routes to travel and figure it's and see. It's also a master of scale. Aside from the dungeons, which are all pretty samey, Everything else in the world is so incredibly huge and mm-hmm. unique, like a random castle. Uh, I don't know if you've been there yet. It's in the Weeping Area, Andrew. It, I think it's Castle Morn. No, that castle yet. is just like a side area off the bottom of the map. And there's a side quest that can go through there, but you can easily just avoid it. But the castle itself is actually pretty big. It has a boss, it has a unique item, and it has a unique side quest line. And it's super different from the other castles in the world. So like pretty much every area of the map in this huge world has a lot of interesting shit going on in it. So there's always stuff and to they do tease that you with just copy-paste. <clears throat> and they tease you with it. Something that I've just taken in with the game that I just fucking melt. Anytime you look at the skybox, you are looking at something interesting. Anytime. You see the giant urn tree, you see a castle in the background, you see like a fortress, you see maybe a cave system. They have aligned the entire open world that at some point the skybox and the background has something you want to explore. It it's, it does the same thing that Breath of the Wild do, did. Ugh, I can't talk. That Breath of the Duh. Wild did that I loved, where it just usually at almost every point, there's something in your vision that's calling you to go do mm-hmm. something. That's a good yeah, open yeah, world. Yeah, definitely. That's that's how you avoid um, that's successful open world design. That's how you avoid having the Ubisoft formula, where it's just yeah. map markets constantly. Yep. You yep. always want to you want to keep players engaged in God. the game world by keeping them in the game world. I also love the fact there's no fucking HUD most of the time. It's so goddamn yeah, engaging. If your open world game, I was thinking about this yesterday. If your open world game has a marker system, it fucking sucks. Because then you spend the entire game looking at the markers. Like Grand Theft Auto, they're fun, but you spend 90% of the game looking at the fucking mini-map. It's not, it's not engaging. It's, it's not interesting. It depends on the game. That depends on the game. Because if it's a bad game, I've been playing Tyranny, which is one of my favorite like mm-hmm. D&D franchises. That game isn't good. <laughs> so I appreciate every hint. I keep opening up the journal, like pressing the J key, like, where do I have to go? How do I solve this fucking puzzle? It's not fun. I don't want to think about this. So sometimes they're useful. I wish it was optional. Mm-hmm. Yes, optional, optional is them. perfect. Optional should be there because it's like, if you spend an hour looking for something, then turn it on and find out where to go. But 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Man. Do you guys remember the um, Dead Space marker thing? Not marker, but like where you press a button and you get like yeah. a jujoop mm -hmm. sound effect <laughs> and it would show you the way. Yeah, that was yeah. perfect because it was optional and it was like built into the... I, I guess it was immersive. It felt like it's yeah. actually happening to the character. That was Ghost nice. of, Ghost like of Tsushima good, is right? another recent game that had a similar um, function where you just press the, the touch thing and the wind guides you to where you need to go. Was, so that, was, game, cool, yeah, something like that. was that game good? Because I heard really mixed things. I haven't heard mixed things about Ghost of Tsushima. Most people I never heard who mixed played it, things. Yeah, it's critically acclaimed. And I, I really loved it as well. Okay. Um, I was just considering yeah, it was really playing good. it, that's all. It's great. Uh, okay, so I have a question. Does Elden Ring have co-op? It does, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is gonna be my ham-fisted attempt at a segue. Would you guys ever, like, f fake yourself disconnecting or crashing so you don't have to play with <laughs> women? <laughs> oh, you saw that on Twitter too? <laughs> what is this? Oh, it's Kaya's topic. I'll let him yeah, tell it. I was it, reading that a couple days ago it, and watching the clip. Talk it about is a it. great that, that headline. Just segue. Um, I'll read the headline and you can talk about it. You probably know more. It says, Twitch streamer Jason R. Accused of faking stream crashes to avoid playing <laughs> Valorant with women. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's such a good headline. I was gonna talk about that and then just fucking forgot. It's yeah, like he's a, a go ahead, go ahead. He's a Valorant streamer, and he got into some hot water on Twitter because he was like calling a sixteen-year-old ugly or some shit. So he was like roasting a sixteen-year-old that was in his game who also happened to be a streamer. And then the sixteen-year-old was like, "Yeah, this is real hot shit coming from a guy whose wife doesn't let him play with women online." So then after that mm. came out with him getting dunked on, a lot of people started posting his clips. And in some of the clips, he, he'd he say, like, hello to his team. And a or he said, like, what do you guys want for the role? And a girl said, I'll just fill. So he mutes his mic <laughs> and then he presses Alt F4. He has to look at the keyboard to find <laughs> Alt F4 and you can see it. And then he unmutes his mic and he's like, hello? Hello? He's like, oh, it must have crashed. That's weird. <laughs> And then, yeah, he just apparently has had a whole history of dodging when women are in his game. Wait, so is it his fault then or his wife's fault? It sounds I, I like a know, shitty thing of his wife to... Yeah, I don't know if it's actually his wife telling him to do it. From what I heard, his wife also sent, like, rude DMs to women in his chat from time to time. <laughs> but from the everything else I read, it's just he doesn't play with women. He just doesn't. It's, I, I just if know, that's true, it's weird to me that she gets a pass on this when she sounds genuinely abusive then. <laughs> I, I just love the like imagery of him sitting there like uh, pretending to break up like <laughs> I'm about to dr I'm in a tunnel right now I'm got like crumpling piece of paper like <laughs> I'm breaking up <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> clips I saw too. were pretty goofy oh. yeah, that's, oh, weird. that's awesome that, isn't this some, so do you guys think because I was it Ninja? I think one of them yeah, did the same thing. Yeah, I was going to say, thing. Ninja yeah. did the same thing. But in, really? Ninja guess, was honest. Ninja yeah. was like, okay, you know what? You guys always start fucking rumors about everybody who exactly. plays together that they're like secretly fucking, so I'm just not going to do it. Fuck you. What's the difference? Which, you know, agree or disagree with it. At least he was honest and it's his choice. So this guy's just lying about it? Yeah, so th from what I, again, all the stuff with his wife is unconfirmed as far as I, as uh -huh. far as I've been able to tell. But it is confirmed through the clips that he literally just doesn't like playing with women. He just will not do it. He'll dodge Q, he'll alt F4, he'll baby rage. Like, he just will not play with a girl on his team. Does it become <laughs> admirable if he's doing it because he doesn't want his community to go harass that woman? No, because that is absolutely not the point he's making. If he's doing that, it, like, how are they going to go harass her? Like, it's not like she's a streamer or something. And it was just why? random people Wait. in Valorant Q. And why would that matter more than them harassing his male teammates? Well, because Twitch chat generally is pretty sexist from what I've seen. Yes, very much so. I guess. No, they, de they definitely are. Charlie was playing yeah, um, no, that was a disaster. Horizon Forbidden West the other day, and it was like all yeah. of the criticism about the game was just that it's a female protagonist. Yeah, it's <laughs> not all the criticism, but it was, it was a lot. It ha it is like clockwork. Anytime at like the game awards or something, there's a game that has like a girl in the trailer or something that they lose their fucking mind. Everyone yep. likes to pretend it doesn't happen. But I played Horizon uh, Forbidden West for two streams. I think like twelve hours. 
all 12 hours were nonstop fucking whining that it was a woman and she wasn't super hot in their eyes. Yep. So it was like and, constant and fucking screeching. It was so frustrating. And it happens uh, on the other end chats. too because if huh. she was super hot, all the comments would just be, oh, booba, boobs, Show she's booby, big boobies, yeah. she's so hot, woman, hot woman. It's it's like not even like ironic funny anymore. It's just annoying. Yeah. And I, th I do think she's hot still, so... I guess, fair enough, I, I haven't played any of those games or, like, I don't have a chat that big. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really like Horizon Forbidden West, but my main complaint wasn't, I don't like this woman, I don't like woman in the game, <laughs> where it seems like that was everyone else's major fucking complaint based on the fucking chat when I was trying to play it. Yeah. Ah, uh, god. Okay, so is, is that his concern, I guess? trying have, to protect the women or do you think that just his excuse no that is absolutely <laughs> just his excuse i don't think he's some <laughs> kind of hero how do you know <laughs> because his fucking he's just really bad at explaining his point his twitter like i went through his twitter like most of his tweets are just kind of like weird like he's just kind of an <laughs> odd guy is he a big streamer i don't know yeah, if you want to say his na name at all but i don't he, know he's a big streamer he, he's like pretty fucking big for Valorant, probably one of the biggest. Well, you can say his name then. We said Ninja's name. Who is it? Well, Kai already said it. His name's yeah. Jason R. We, yeah. we already said his name. It's in the headline. <laughs> it's uh, say it Jason, Jason R, yeah. Whom, I've never heard of him, but I guess he's big. Um, I mean, okay, so if he was honest about it, would you be cool with it? Or not make fun of him? Uh, if he was like, well, it's you know, an inherently you sexist starting decision. Rumors. It is, an, no, it is an literally inherent... inherently sexist. Like, even in Ninja's well, yeah. case, where he's like, I'm not going to play with women because I don't trust my chat not to make rumors and I yeah, want I don't my wife to love me. It's still like, okay, that's still kind of fucked up. Maybe just like control the, you know, the situation better and let your wife know you're not going to cheat on her yeah. through Fortnite. <laughs> or, or do do something incredible that's been a sage wise wisdom on the internet for years. Ignore it. Just just ignore it. Your fans are going to be shitty no matter what you do. Every fan base has shitty people. Just ignore them. Just I don't even it. know if ignoring it is the best option in this situation, considering targeted harassment does happen to the well, people. Well, obviously, you need to curtail the actual, like, negative stuff. Like, if they're just going and attacking them or doxing people, yeah. But in terms of people just being shitty, that's going to happen. You can't control you know, all you, of it. You know how Twitch chat is, though, Andrew? Like, if you ignore something, Twitch, like, the bad part of Twitch chat usually t takes that as the streamer accepting them or... Mm. promoting it Apparently, all like being okay with it this is an impressive track record though i have to say so according to a twitch ambassador i don't know what that means annie dro <laughs> is, is that part of like um, the un or something <laughs> i don't know is she part of nato <laughs> i have no idea but according to annie dro jason r has avoided over 50 women by pretending his stream keeps crashing oh, that's Who is counting? Lot. holy shit <laughs> Are they all a part of like a support group now as well? Who's counting? <laughs> I don't know, it's funny. It, it's from both sides, because it's like what he's doing, you could call it cringe. And then from the other side, you could say like, you're not entitled to stream with this guy just because you're a woman, you know? It's it's like weird. Well, yeah, but I you're... Guess. I don't know, some Twitch streamers are like in a weird position. This is awkward. Like, does he really maybe have a... I don't know, I don't want to be a dick and say his girlfriend is abusive. I don't know what... Yeah, is that like a known thing? Why else would I, he I don't know, I don't see why else he would do it though. I I can tell you immediately why. He's definitely one of those guys who thinks like, oh, if there's a girl on my team, we're gonna insta lose, and I don't want to listen to her. I'm just gonna <laughs> fucking dodge. It's not worth my fucking time. A hundred percent. If it's not his wife making him do it, if that's truly just a lie, then it is just him thinking like, yep, gonna lose. There's a girl here now. We're fucked. Might as well just get out now. <laughs> He's absolutely striking me as one of those guys from what I've seen. If it's not his wife. That's so dumb. It is beyond fucking dumb. But yep, yeah, that was pretty wacky. Should watch the clip when you get the chance, because he keeps trying to justify <laughs> one of his uh, responses were, No, 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 my computer crashed. My stream crashed. Everything <laughs> crashed. I didn't dodge. 
even though like in the clip you see him look down you can pretty much see his hands move the key on the keyboard too so he goes alt and then up to f4 with like it's so clear that he alt f4s the game you can easily easily see it like there's no wiggle room you can absolutely see him do it and it is literally the millisecond after the girl says i can fill and then he mutes his do, mic do and starts think talking he has a Maybe at this point, wouldn't he like have a macro assigned to his keyboard to crash the game and mute his <laughs> there's Discord? A big, a big, there's a big button. red woman button. Yeah, he just slams <laughs> it. The woman button. Computer shuts down. <laughs> Giant lever like, like on a... the back. He just like pulls it like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, like a huge nuclear attack button on the desk of the president that he smashes like a villain, <laughs> like a cartoon villain. Woman ejects. <laughs> God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What happens if there's more than one woman in this in in the team? Does it like escalate, or is it just is one like the same? I don't as know. Two? I've only seen a few clips. I don't know about the fifty other unconfirmed sightings, but uh, from the one <laughs> I've seen, that's probably this day, that's a nuclear level event. If there's like two yeah. or more women on the team, he uninstalls <laughs> yeah, the just game. Shut the stream. And he he, he yeah. would fucking mail Riot Games. Be like, <laughs> I didn't know this Twitch. could happen. What the fuck? Come on, please, the country. <laughs> please patch fix Valorant. <laughs> <laughs> so as he never ever played with a woman I don't think it's a coincidence Like you can't accidentally avoid half of the human species Right Yeah what about I, the women that don't talk Yeah that's, uh, that's what I'm oh, wondering good point. So, well, his, One of his tweets was like Ignoring the thousands of games I've played with women on my team You know like he's saying He's always played with women These are isolated incidents but I also can't really find any clips of him actually playing with a woman on his team, or if it is, I think what happens is he didn't know they were a girl going into it, so like maybe they talked in like the sixth round and it was a girl, and then by that point he probably just couldn't alt F4, because you're too deep now. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so is it at all possible that like... If I, no, it sounds like he's got a like a history of this, but I, I was going to say, is it at all possible that in that clip that you guys have seen, did he stream, or, or sorry, game crash or something, and that's when he hit Alt F4? No, no okay, okay, Jackson, you need to watch the clip. Uh, I'm re-watching it. Basically, he says, like, hello. Can you put it in chat? Yeah, here. For us too. Yeah, pin it. I can pin it, just put the link. It's It's in there at the <clears> bottom. <throat> Oh wait, wrong clip, wrong clip, this is different. Just paste it on article, oh. Sorry, that was his response, to the, the, the one underneath that. So when you go onto that page, it's the one underneath that where he pretends the game crashed. Did he do like a crying apology kind of thing? He did like a statement thing. The website's having a really hard time loading for me. It should be on that page though. Uh, oh my god, there's so many uh, links. I, I think I mind. see it. I think I see it. Maybe I can just find the direct video to be easier. Uh, <laughs> I like that headline. Twitch streamer Jason R. Response to backlash over dodging female players. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of big wait. on Twitter. Yeah, wait, and this is, I don't think this is the clip. But it's, a, it's another clip of him where he goes, Lord knows there might be a, a, a bitch on my team, a, a woman on my team or something. I don't know what he's talking about specifically, but it, it seems like he's angry about there potentially being a woman on his team. Yeah, I don't know if that's like a, like supposed to be a meme or anything. I can't find like the raw dodging clip now. It was on that no, page initially. No, I'm starting to think it didn't happen, Charlie. Oh, here it is. Wait, is this it? What the fuck? Why can't I find it? <laughs> <laughs> is this fake news? No, no, yeah. no, no. I watched the so goddamn I think it clip. is. Hold on. Charlie's starting targeted harassment against this poor innocent man. Well, you yeah, know how many women do like... you play with, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> I only play with women. Otherwise, I've never seen you play with women. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this go? What are you doing, Christ? <laughs> I'm yeah, trying to find like the original clip. Hmm. I don't know, Charlie. It's getting more and more suspicious. All right. Well, well, he's trying to find that, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi. What's your what, What's your favorite aspect of Elden Ring? Like the absolute <laughs> favorite aspect. Oh, God. There's There's no no talk about that. <laughs> talk about that for three minutes while Charlie finds this. 
Um, I think I think the sense of discovery is just perfect. You come to a boss, he's too hard. You go, I'll come back later. You come to one area, it's got like four branching paths. You do one, it's got a boss. So then you go, oh, I'll go do the others now, and they lead to a whole other section of the map. There's yeah, I'm doing fucking Stormvale Castle right now, and it's just it's huge. It just goes on forever, but in a good way because it's just oh, it's so good. Are the environments very? Does it enough? have that? I'm sorry. I just said, are the environments varied enough? If oh, it's yeah. That large? Oh, for sure. Uh, even when you're in, like, a specific area, it changes often enough. Like, that castle, for example. First, you go alongside the wall, and it's, like, war-torn and got a whole bunch of, like, fucking chunks Fuck, taken out of it. Found it. So, you, like, you're fucking jumping amongst, like, broken walls and climbing through holes in it and all the outside. Then it takes you into, like, a prisoner's quarters... And then after you go through there, you climb out of there and you're in like a fucking mess hall. And then you can go outside and there's like a whole fucking battalion of soldiers waiting because they're like waiting to ambush. And then it's it's all the same castle, but you just go through these different locales in it. And it's it's not like a lot of RPGs where it's like, oh, and then there's this corridor and then there's this corridor. Be careful. Then there's this part. That's the same copy and paste. There's. From what I've seen, there's very little reused locations. And even then, it's only the smaller dungeons. Yeah. So yeah, Charlie so, found the clip. Yeah, 43 seconds in, you can see it. So if you wanted to watch that and see it, it's there. I'll pin it in our uh, Patreon chats. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much just as goofy as I remembered it being. <laughs> right, I'm watching. He he talks to them initially. Yeah, that was before she said anything. So he kind of baits them out <laughs> to find if they're women or not. <laughs> He's like, so what are you hey, guys playing? Hey, any of you huh? guys like purses and sex in the city? <laughs> <laughs> Is he the new Euphoria? <laughs> what is Euphoria? Why have I heard of that? It's the biggest I, dude, show I don't right know. Now. It's, it's a huge show right now. I have no idea what the fuck it's about. Yeah, I play Isn't it on that the hentai where reason. they eat each other's shit? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it's what? also a Netflix show now. It's making it. <laughs> Wait, yeah, the they, they adapted like... it. It's live action people <laughs> eating each other's shit. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a hit. It's massive. Oh, uh, yeah, it's an HBO Human show. Human was just a few years too soon. It, it, it really is massive. I keep hearing more about this show now than I ever did about Game of Thrones, even. It's so huge, yeah. and I don't know what the fuck it's about. It's basically a bunch of, it's a high school drama, like super oh, exaggerated Christ. though, so it's like drugs, sex, all that. Like a Riverdale? Is it fun? But most uh, years, I don't know, like... I, I've only seen bits and pieces, I plan on binging it starting today, so I'll let you guys know, but from everything I've seen it's just a lot of sex and yelling, and they show full penis, which is kind of crazy. Whoa, Do it's just like Game vagina? of Thrones, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> is that why you want to binge it? <laughs> <laughs> he heard there was cock. No, yeah, I didn't hear. I saw the cock. There's a scene where like a dad has a head injury and he goes drunk driving, comes home and pisses all over the floor, and then delivers a monologue with his dick hanging out for like three minutes. So. Okay. It, like, for, is it a drama? Is it supposed to be funny? It's a drama. I might also yeah. check it out. Oh. Mm. Yeah, most people were crying during that scene <laughs> where he's pissing. <laughs> it was really heartfelt. Uh, yeah, uh, it's got Zendaya, apparently, Zendaya. Yeah. So I guess maybe that's why it's big. She's one of the leads. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, so I guess we didn't come to an ultimatum on, on that guy, whether or not he he did it on, um, because of his wife told him to or not. So I guess we don't know. We'll have to wait for her statement. Yeah, I guess we don't. I still have one more topic though, so Jackson, do you think you're being punished for your crimes against the world in Australia currently? You're getting flooded, right? Oh yeah, just, yeah, it's not too bad. Talk a little bit about that, explain it to everybody. So it's just been raining non-stop for the last week, and yeah, it's, the area around me is flooding. How's um, your dirt pile safe. doing? My dirt, you mean my house? Yeah, your dirt pile. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit more than a dirt pile, but uh -huh, it's, sure. it's fine. It's a wet dirt pile now. It's, um, it's not washing away. No, no, I still own it. 
Okay. That's how the is government the reclaims their land. They they cause a flood initially. <laughs> <laughs> the government, more like Aquaman, <laughs> if it's on his territory now. So is your is the skeleton of your house on top of a hill or anything, or is it like flooded too? What's going on? I actually haven't been out to check yet because the roads are all flooded, so I can't get out to my new house. Aww. But um, I hope it's okay. Yeah, that'd, that'd kind of suck. It's taken a year and a half to build, so... You actually don't know if it's fine or not? No, I can't. I mean, what am I meant to do? Fly my helicopter there? I don't have any way to get there. <laughs> you, might, you could check, like, I don't know, you could call whatever company's in charge of building it or they can't you get bought there the plot from and ask, like, hey, what's the <laughs> elevation on my property? Oh, I know. It's, it's fairly elevated. And, like, we had all okay. flood risk assessments done on it. And when we initially bought the land and they came back, you know, fine. They said that it's got a low risk of flooding. But then these, like, catastrophic floods started happening this year. So I don't know. I don't know now. Yeah, and I won't so know until I get out there. To give everybody an idea, Jackson in our private chat has been sending us um, photos of the neighboring areas to him, adjacent to him, just flooded with pee-pee-poo-poo water. Water that is entirely brown, which I assume is like... <laughs> It rains and then the sewage water also adds to it, so it gets diluted into the fucking thing. That's disgusting. I mean, yeah, maybe. I, I, that's what storm water usually looks like, though. It's just mixed up with dirt and stuff. No, I didn't know this of it because I didn't uh, think Have of it. Have you ever been in a flood it makes before? Sense. No, I haven't, but Doug has. You remember, like, Doug, my buddy, he his house has been flooded before, and he had to actually relocate and everything. And he said that something I never knew about flooding is that... Uh, all the sewage system, it contributes to the flood. Like, all of that fucking water is diluted with people's shit and piss, and it stinks like a toilet everywhere. Well, and worse than that, it, I mean, not, not, not just the sewage, it picks up everything. Like, flood yeah. water is extremely powerful. Yeah. It picks up everything. Like, there's a lot of... People People are idiots. Like, they'll go, like, uh, like surfing, I guess, bodyboarding, or driving through flood waters, and it's literally the most dangerous thing you could do, because that you don't know what's under the water. There's, like... A lot of debris. There's like garbage mm. bins and like syringes and shit floating around. Yeah, you meant you meant to avoid it. And uh, yeah, so there's a photo in in that I posted to our chat the other day of someone on a second story house, and the floodwaters actually reached their second uh, second floor patio, Damn. Like balcony. Yeah, the that's balcony. how high it's getting yeah. in some places. Holy shit, it's it's insane. But is it where you are currently? Like right now, where so you are. I ha yeah, currently uh, it's not raining at all at the moment. There's a bit of a respite, which is good. They must have heard the official podcast is recording, so the gods stopped uh, <laughs> their, sh their showcase of torrential downpour. So that that's good. Uh, but we haven't had any like you know flooding in the house or anything. But outside is pretty swampy, like the roads and and uh, lawn and such are building up. But we're in a pretty good spot. We are very close to our city, like our townships main river though which is apparently over flooding so that could cause issues if it continues down the week uh but i'm safe i think <laughs> <laughs> do you have a plan I'm for if the flooding continues do you have like some kind of uh, yeah. like a dinghy to escape on uh, yeah i mean i'm gonna i a have a second raft. floor house i have a second floor house so i think I think I'm fine. I think I just won't go downstairs if if it comes to that I'll have to live <laughs> off the second floor. <laughs> There's this um, Uber Eats and it'll pull up on a, like a little like a yeah, canoe. little boat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, it's, okay, it's good luck. It, so there was a situation back in I think 2014 where we had similar levels of flooding. No, it was earlier, 2012 I think, and our, our power was out for like two or three months. But I was living in a pretty rural area at that point. Jesus. Um, but the, the floods were about the same level as what they are currently. But I, my power is still on and the internet's still on. It's only dipped here and there for like an hour or so. Uh, but yeah, I'm still, I'm still going good. But they, they, is, they do say that there's going to be a lot more rain this week, so we'll see. Is it, is this helping at all with your water shortages? I mean, it's not necessarily <laughs> water that you can drink. Clearly, no, <laughs> it's I, full of like shit and piss. Yeah, no water is anything you can really drink, uh, but, like, you can still purify it. Wasn't your problem that even your purification plants didn't have enough water to purify yeah, for people like to drink? The d the dam basins and stuff were running low, yeah. Uh, we haven't Should had any help. droughts. Yeah, we haven't had any droughts in our area, though, which is an issue because we, we didn't have water shortages where we are. So the places that did have water shortages aren't getting this mm. rain, but we are, and we're already pretty fine with water. 
So <laughs> more for us, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, good but luck. All all the major major roads out of where I currently live are completely inundated with water. Like you can't see the road at all, and like they're up to about like the roof of most cars. Like I've seen photos of just cars abandoned in the floods, abandoned in the floods, and sadly, like I think five people have died so far. So we'll see how it goes. I don't Seven. know. I don't really know what it, I don't really know what I'm gonna do if I need to leave. Seven people have died, did you say? Yeah, yeah, I just saw it. Yeah, so, yeah last I heard was four. Uh, yeah, so wow. big call to anyone in Australia or Queensland, because it's Queensland that's currently been affected. Uh, anyone in Queensland out there, stay safe and stay out of the rain and floods. It is dangerous. Don't go bodyboarding through but the water. do what you can to play Elden Ring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if your internet still allows. yeah. You don't send me care packages, please. Send me food. No, nah, you don't need it. it. Just adds to the experience. Seek yeah. your nearest shelter and ask to use their computer. <laughs> have you guys? Have you guys never been through a flood before? Mm, yeah, when uh, I used to go I to have, University yeah. of Tampa, it's in downtown Tampa, which floods badly. Uh, mm -hmm. So typically, what happens, and you've probably seen it on the news is the entire roads in downtown Tampa just flood and you'll see people like try and surf and bodyboard through yeah, it and whatever. that's what I'm talking about. There was alligators in it one time, which was pretty cool. <laughs> oh. And the only time I ever like was affected by it is I was leaving campus during a flood and I didn't know it flooded. So I pulled out of campus, which is a little more elevated than the rest of downtown. And I still remember I made like one right turn and it was just a giant fucking river in that entire road. And I just yeah. drove through it because I was like, yep, well, I'm already here. If my car dies, it dies. Whatever. I made my bed. <laughs> time to line it. You really you shouldn't have driven through it. I know. I <laughs> almost really floated dangerous. that bitch across, but I just barely made it. Jesus. Most well, of the people like that die in floods trail. are people that try to drive through those situations and get stuck. And then the water rises even more. Like, flash floods <laughs> yeah. are a real thing. I, yeah. I, I don't know if flash floods happen a lot in, in Florida. I would assume they do, since there's a lot of, like, uh, bayous and stuff like that. But uh, flash flooding is, like, flooding that happens extremely quickly before you can even tell that it's flooding. Mm -hmm. The waters just, like, monumentally rise extremely quickly. It's super dangerous. And that's usually I mean, what most we get people a, die from. I mean, we get a fuckload of flooding from hurricanes. Yeah. It's yeah, pretty guess. regular. Yeah. Does that subside pretty quickly? Or does uh, it hang around a lot? I'd say it depends. You know, it's, I guess, I don't really know what quickly subsiding constitutes. Mm. Yeah. My college actually flooded as well, uh, to be fair. And people, yeah, I remember there was one guy who would drive his car through it back and forth, and he had a rope that he put out the trunk, and people would fucking surf through it. So, That's that was fun. Cool, it was pretty neat, yeah. It is cool until you realize you're surfing and body, uh, bodyboarding through well, shit water. Like well, no, the, said. the funny part is later he got stuck like, in the middle of oh. it. Aww. Yeah. So, a bummer. Yeah, good job to that guy. Do you think the world is eventually going to uh, like just flood a lot and then people with like houseboats are the most yes. well equipped? And we'll live, the like, we'll live in Waterworld and Aquaman will show up. That's right. I think there's a very good chance that the whole world floods. Why not? Yeah, it happened before. Mm. Now, yeah, God, let's, do it again. Only a limited let's amount put this, of water. Let's put this in perspective, boys. For the whole world to flood, the whole world, we would need Mount Everest to be submerged. Oh, yeah. imagine that's the only thing alive and that's where all of us live. <laughs> that's a cool anime idea. That's, a, that's, that's, alive. Alive. that's literally that movie, the plot actually. to 2020, 2012. Yeah. No, it's not. For that is not the plot. They made they made secret boats in China. What that was they going all on? on? They made you secret the, boats in the Mount Everest or was it a Himalayan mountain? You guys are delusional. First of all, of Charlie said that the mountain's alive, which I'm not going to let that pass. I don't know what the fuck that meant. <laughs> and then also Kaya just said 202012. What the fuck is happening? What? What? Science, Science Jackson, Jesus Sorry. Christ. Yeah, you don't understand. You don't have floods. <laughs> what don't you understand? Yeah, idiots. <laughs> have you even read the Mayan calendar? Did you even watch <laughs> Moonfall? Like, come on. <laughs> oh, speaking of Moonfall, Andrew, I got yeah. uh, uh, Aaron Chase Christ, and... Christ, not again. Yeah. No, I... Aaron Chase and Meadow all went to see it, 
uh-huh. and they have also seen the light. They spent three hours detailing the plot to chase his girlfriend after seeing Holy it last shit. night. Holy shit. You want to know how I know they did? Because Aaron at 12.30 in the morning messaged me and said, Moonfall is insane. <laughs> I don't yeah. think he could contain himself. <laughs> I, it, I I swear to God, I can't recommend that movie enough. It changes people for the better. It's, it is one of the best bad movies I've ever seen in my whole life. It yeah, is I, easily top three. I really want to fucking see it. Christ. Oh, I'm it's so good. going to see it. It's, it sucks. it's just so good. Uh, you should try to survive first, Jackson. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't go, I can't mm-hmm. go watch it. The cinemas are all flooded. Jackson, what would you do Aww. earnestly if they said they're evacuating the entire continent of Australia? Where would you go? What would you do? <laughs> there would be such like large global <laughs> ramifications for that. that. If like Australia needed to be evacuated, there'd be something big going on. That'd be enormous. I I don't know where I would go though. What would you even do if you were told that you couldn't be in America that, anymore? Yeah, it's not that terrible. Australia's population for the entire continent is twenty five million. So it's not the worst. It's about 30, yeah. Could hmm. be. Hey, that's a lot. Could be a lot worse. Hey, that's a. That is a lot of people. It is. It's not like, um, I think you guys are skewed because America has such a large population, but most countries are like 30 million. You have a lot of, you have a lot of places to go though. I mean, you have tons of neighbors to the north. You could go east to America. Most of the neighbors to the north hate us. (laughs) No, everybody loves you. Come on. No, I don't think they hate or love you. They're just like... They would be like, oh, you guys were a thing. I forgot. Australia. Yeah. That got flooded, huh? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. How often do you hang out in Papua New Guinea, Jackson? I think we colonize that. <laughs> so they, they really hate us. Oh, boy. Jackson, you could sail to the Pitcairn Islands. They have mountains. Oh, sure yeah. Be safe. Jackson, just... 30 million, yeah, 30 million vacant Just rooms. go south to Tasmania. Tasmania is part of Australia. Oh. Uh, well, go True. southeast to New Zealand. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, we have a love-hate relationship with New Zealand. I don't think they'd want all of us. New Zealand is just, it, it, like, the better you. It's it's like they took a sliver of Australia and just, like, made it the best it could be, you know? Yeah, why are well, Kiwis if, so much cooler than your average, like, bogan? Yeah. If that, were, if that were true, they wouldn't stop... They would stop coming here. Like, most New Zealanders uh, immigrate over here. We have... So, we Like, it's... A big That's just because you're here. bigger. Tradies. Bigger isn't always better. Oh, yeah. Jackson. I think it's because we have more. Uh, we have more opportunities and stuff. I yeah. You can, you can stay with me, Jackson. In Germany. Yeah. You're welcome. Help yeah, us. I'm fine. And that's a, the not, water world. That's a long the other twenty-one flight. million. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Well, it's better than drowning. <laughs> <laughs> Only, I don't know about that. Maybe. Fuck you. <laughs> you don't like Germany. You're, the, you're the, like the biggest proponent of complaining about Germany to me. <laughs> I'm still not drowning. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, who, the... Who do you think... Go ahead. I was going to say, the, you'll be the first person to drown in Germany once the floods happen. <laughs> They'll kick you out. Apparently... Oh, I'll just leave. Apparently, the longest non-stop, like, continuous flight in the world... Is from Singapore London to Australia. No, it's Singapore to New York. It's seventeen hours fifty minutes. That's the Oof. longest flight. I figured to be like a twenty-four hour flight. No, apparently it, that's not the longest. Fuel. Planes can't hold that much fuel. Yeah. No, they do. No, no, they can. There's definitely been longer flights. I've because they were setting records for flights that were longer than twenty-four hours for sure. This, I think, this is commercial though. They mean. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. How would you feel if you God, spent, if you genuinely spent two thirds of a day on a plane? I did. I did the like. <laughs> no, in the you top had five transfers. Longest. This is one plane, and one it was still extremely plane. long. The only reason I couldn't get direct is because that's too long. They don't offer that. So yeah. I did the <laughs> max amount, pretty much. It, my my first flight to, I think it was Houston. I can't remember, but it was it was like sixteen hours. It was exceptionally long. 17 hours, maybe. Holy shit. <laughs> it was awful. Did you spring like for the, day. like, seats and where I'd... it reclines into a bed, or were you sitting the whole time? Uh, that that one was in economy, so it was just standard. I was Oof. just in a normal seat. God, that's hell. Yeah, I, I didn't even have my Nintendo Switch to help me through that one. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. see? Don't you wish you had it? 
Yeah, I would have loved to annoy annoyed the old lady next to me. No on one on a plane is headphones. annoyed. Use headphones. She, she'd you, be annoyed by guys, the lights. You have never been on a plane. You guys have never been on a plane because the amount of people who watch things on their phone or their laptop or on the fucking built-in TV screens in the seat in front of them is yeah. everybody. Every single person on the plane is watching no, something not with this headphones. Old lady. No, this old lady was constantly talking to me or asleep. Well, you can show her your cool game. Yeah, yeah we're we're okay, wait, wait. Yeah. You felt bad because she was constantly talking to you? Sounds like she was the annoying one. Yeah, Who cares? Uh, really? She wasn't annoying. I wouldn't say annoying. But she was She was talkative, yeah. <laughs> I just well, I'd have to one... play your video game or watch your yeah. movies. I'd play it's it, have one of your phone I, in, and just be like, uh huh, group. yeah, uh huh, if she just kept talking and talking. You're not obligated <laughs> to talk to her. Just ignore her? That's so mean. You uh, guys are mean. You should be like, all right, I'd like yeah. to go to sleep now, and then just play it out of the corner of your eye. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> turn your back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to sleep now, and then do absolutely nothing else. Don't change anything. Just sit there. <laughs> Put your headphones on. Yeah, I'm still listening. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, how about that, champ? Nice. <laughs> she did give me, like, one of her <laughs> snacks that she didn't want, though. That was Aww. nice of her. Aww. It's so nice. Alrighty, that's gonna do it for this week's episode. I think it, I think uh, this Elden Ring-themed episode goes to show that two of us, at least, really promote the game and think that you'll probably enjoy it, right? Yeah, I would say so. Yep. There I love go. it. Can't talk about it enough. So, that, so that's a 50% on the official rating. Pretty good. Jackson, you played two hours. Yep. Which is more than he's played in pretty much every other Souls game. <laughs> I Again, I played two hours of Bloodborne. And I think Bloodborne looked cooler, at least. Like, the aesthetic was cooler oh, than Bloodborne. Oh, God. <clears throat> There's so many different locations in uh, yeah. Elden Ring. There's You're going to find one that you might like more, but you, I agree, Bloodborne's art design was unreal. You might even find some that are reminiscent of Bloodborne, hint, hint. Mm-hmm. That's all that, that, that would be such an enormous flex if there was, like, Bloodborne 2 localized entirely in Elden Ring. Is that what you're telling me? I'm not saying anything. I'm that would actually be awesome. Anything. All right. Anyway, that does it for this week's episode. Thank you for listening. Um, we got mm -hmm. Patreon, patreon.com slash the official podcast. Go over there and check it out. We're also on iTunes and stuff like that. Leave us a positive rating if you're so inclined, mm -hmm. if you like the show. And on Spotify. It was yep. five stars or, now. Or, or do the game review approach and just because one episode didn't load on Spotify, re negatively review the whole show. Say it sucks. Five stars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or give it five stars. Wouldn't load. Best show I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.